Kilmarnock and Hibbs are the trio under pressure. The Fir Park side trailed the other two by three points as they kicked off this afternoon at home to third placed Dundee United. The commentary comes from Jock Brown. There's no surprise in that Motherwell team which shows just one change from the one which produced the biggest win of the season last week. 5-0 against Raith Rovers and that change is enforced by the suspension of Billy Davis. His replacement is 21-year-old Kevin Christie, who was named a substitute for Aberdeen half a dozen times last season. Then he was allowed to move to East Fife at the start of this season. Alec McLeish remembered his initial promise at Aberdeen, and he's given him another chance in the big time. Well, there's no messing about by Tommy McLean after what he considered substandard performances by his front three in recent matches. They're all dropped. McLaren, Winters and Olufsen. Morris Mouth passes unfit, but Stephen Presley returns after suspension. Bowman, McSwigan and McKinnon replace the drop trio. No question though about Seab Dykstra's inclusion in goal. 12 shutouts in 23 matches and only 13 goals conceded have made him a key man for United following his transfer from Queen's Park Rangers. He returns today to the ground where he made his name and became a cult figure in his time with Motherwell. And the referee is Alan Freeland from Aberdeen. A match of immense importance for Motherwell in their attempt to avoid being in the playoff spot at the end of the season. And for Dundee United, an opportunity to get back on the rails. They've been a little bit below par in recent matches. Stephen Presley, though, happy to be back after being ordered off against Hibernian, which put him out of the Cup semi-final in midweek. United with players on that side, playing for a place in the semi-final replay coming up on Tuesday. But for Motherwell, this is really very much do or die. So coming off an excellent result last Saturday against Wraith Rovers and looking to continue that kind of form. See, Dykstra, though, will be a major hurdle to Motherwell. Former Motherwell manager, too, Tommy McLean, now with Dundee United. That's aim for Zetherland in good position, down for Duffy, good play! And Motherwell will carve wide open. What a good chance it was for Duffy. Two midfield men arriving in the box. Zetterland teeing that up for his midfield teammate. And a miscue with a shot from Duffy. McLeish very unhappy. Indeed, I imagine that with that kind of marking. Perry back to McKimmy. As they're trying to pick out Bowman's run at the byline, it's good play. There's McSwigan. That was good build up play also from Dundee United. They don't have the same options available now to hit the very quick front men who are not playing, but that was a good build up. A very good chip shot there from Tommy Coyne, carrying too much height. And again, his awareness and vision apparent for all to see. Swigan against me. Bowman arriving a real charge forward, colliding with his own player, allowing Martin to clear up. Ray McKinnon felt the full force of Dave Bowman there. Bad tackle by Weir. Lucky, I think, he made no contact. Goal kick is given. The referee may just want to require one of Mickey Weir in the passing. A very rash tackle from the back by Weir, and indeed, that's what the referee's doing. So, here's Mickey Weir getting a little ward. The apology offered instantly by Weir, and Finnis did that immediately after the tackle. But Bowman did well, charging forward here. McKinnon trying to help, took the full brunt of that challenge and made it easy for Martin. Here's Van der Gag, Duffy putting him under pressure. Now Valakari. The free kick goes to Motherwell. Zetteran and Dolan taking on Valakari there. Motherwell wait for Mitchell van der Gag to make his way into the area. He will be the main target. <laughs> Penalty's been given. A push in the back by Presley on coin. 
Penalty kick to Motherwell, a wonderful opportunity for them to get in the lead. And Stuart McKimmy has watched with the referee. And he's going to be in trouble for the words he's uttered. Well, I must say, I have sympathy with Presley. He seemed to me to go strongly to play the ball. Alan Freeland is taking action here against Stuart McKimmy for dissent. But I have to say, that for me is a softer penalty kick as I've seen for a very long time. Well, perhaps no, at that angle there was an arm used by Presley going into the back of Coy, and that looks more like a penalty, so perhaps the referee was right. It's a great chance for Tommy Coyne, who's taken over from Owen Coyle as a penalty taker. But well, it was the last one against Kilmarnock. Crucial penalty kick for Tommy Coyne. Superb penalty. Thanks to guest right for the accuracy and the pace of the ball was there. Well, look how far across Dykstra gets for this. Not far away at all, but it's beautifully positioned by Tommy Coyne. Jinking run there, sliding that into the corner. Relief there for the Motherwell management team. They have the lead. There's this header. Coyne in space on the left. Delightful pass, Coyle. Taken out by McKimmy, and McKimmy is going to be on the golf. Booked a few minutes ago for descent, and that shows the folly of that kind of behaviour. The inevitable red card to follow. There can be no other outcome. United will be reduced to ten, and McKimmy is out of the cup semi-final replay. There's no point in Dave Bowman complaining, it'll make no difference. McKimmy doesn't bother waiting, he's off. A lovely pass from Tommy Coyne, Coyle taking out in the runs, knocking it away from McKimmy, it was a bad tackle. He has no complaint about that. But the real stupidity was in the booking for descent earlier. Never going to change the referee's mind about that, so that means that, that kind of challenge, would have been a yellow card, becomes a red. United have switched to a back four, Tommy McLean has passed the message on, it's now Bowman, Presley, Perry and Pedersen. Three in the middle. Bowled over there by Arnott. Arnott I think will be spoken to as well. Yeah, and he's content with the free kick. Something else happening off the ball. The referee asks for the free kick to be taken again. Steve McMillan has gone down. Now, did the assistant referee see anything? The crowd behind the goal howling there as McMillan went down. He's taken a bang in the face from someone, it would appear. Well, the problem has caused a bit of jostling on inside the penalty area. You can see McSweegan running up there with McMillan. Or at the penalty spot now, the arm was flailing. Down went McMillan. And the United player, very fortunate to escape. Well, referee clearly saw nothing, and the assistant referee unable to assist. He needs eyes at the back of his head. The official. Wesley helps it on. Turned away by May for a corner. Question here of Dundee really coming here for a quiet match before the cup semi replay. Good header out by Van der Guy, kind of inspirational clearance. Well, the Royal Management team thought that was a foul on Coyle by Pedersen. Pedersen wants to have words with Coyle. Some nasty exchanges going on all over the field now, suddenly. This has become rather unpleasant. This is Coyle. Coyle with a chance. So another promising attack this for Motherwell. Bowman holding up the process of Coyne. That was a chance for Owen Coyle. 
this is Weir. Here for Gordon Coy, finds Arnott. Coyne again. Not a bad effort trying to catch out Dykstra at the far post. It is the end of the first half, and mercifully, I would suggest, in view of the tempers rising all over the field, it all began to be ragged when Stephen Presley was adjusted to a foul Tommy Coyne after 36 minutes. A penalty kick was given, which United hotly disputed, and Tommy Coyne stroked home the spot kick superbly. But then Stuart McKimmy booked for dissent at the penalty incident, was ordered off in 40 minutes. And Alan Freeland has still a very tough task to handle in the second half. It's Motherwell 1, Dundee United now. Shell Olufsen has been introduced for the second half by Dundee United. He replaces Jamie Dolan, so some reorganisation of the United side required. Ray McKinnon likely to go into midfield. Well, let's hope that the interval has removed some of the needle which had crept into this match as the first half wore on. Motherwell, of course, playing for the lives in the Premier Division and the United full of pride after their excellent run this season and still with players trying to prove themselves for the Cup semi-final to come in midweek. But a corner kick straight away from Motherwell. Coyle's corner. Met by Perry. Collins pass intended for Coyle. Cut off well by Presley, but this is Eddie May. The up and under for Motherwell. This is Weir. Well blocked by Duffy. Offside against Coyne. And the reorganisation, which with anticipated by Tommy McLean, has taken place. McKinnon's in midfield, replacing Dolan, and Olofsson supports Mike Swigan up front. Good footwork by Zetherland in a tight situation, fouled in the end by Martin. Ray McKinnon playing on the right-hand side of midfield now. We'll take this free kick. Presley and Perry have joined the attack. Duffy gets up well, and the save by Howie. The keeper caught about two yards off his line when Duffy made contact. That was the problem. You see him there in the six-yard box. It was dipping over the top. The keeper did well in the end. Kinnan's corner this time. Presley helps it back into the danger area. Well, no question of United having a quiet outing this afternoon. They're totally committed. That's a good leap by Presley against Van der Gag. Space now for Coyne. Mike Miller. Christie. Oh, that's good play by McMillan, he's away from McKinnon. Disappointing ball up by McMillan, but he has yet another corner. Comes away in the end by Duffy, Mitchell van der Gag caused a few problems in there. and returned it towards Van der Gag. Duffy did well, that's Valakari. Well, Dijkstra seemed to be totally convinced that was going wide, but there wasn't much in it. The big keeper looking so relaxed there. Good header back by Martin. Duffy challenged well at the edge of the area, but this is a good controlled volley by Valakari. Didn't go for all-out power. It certainly wasn't far away. Presley strong going for that, but it was a good tackle made by Christie. Here's Coyne and Coyle. Good defending by Pedersen. Nick Swigan through the middle, it goes for Olofsson. This is where he's so dangerous. Oh, and that's not a bad effort on the volley. He knew the ball would dip. Well, he does carry extra menace now up front with this extra pace and movement. Didn't fancy taking on two defenders, rifled in the volley. 
Robbie Winters prepares to come on to replace Gary McSwiggan, who hasn't really taken the opportunity to stake a claim for a place in the side for the semi-final. So Winters joins Olofsson again in attack. So Alec McLeish knows he's now facing blinding pace up front. Duffy's header, Winters involved straight away. Here's Winters. It's a great effort by Winters. Just on the field, he almost equalised for United. Suddenly, he wasn't picked up, there was space that Olsen caused the problem. It's a good effort by Winters. Well, Tony McLean looks on. So close to being on level terms. Olsen against May. Powerful play to win the corner kick. Presley hovering the edge of the area. And Perry got to that, it's off the line. Still a chance on, here's Presley. Returned by Pedersen to Zetterman, a very intelligent ball that. Still United in a possession. Mark Perry denied there in the goal line. Chance for Winters. He was onside. What a chance that was. Delivered by Olives in the pass. So a goal kick it is to Motherwell. They'll be mightily relieved about that. But what a mess at this corner kick defensively from Motherwell's point of view. Mark Perry getting the better of Scott Howey. It's off the line by Mickey Weir. And then the scramble ensued. Well, Robbie Winters perhaps hasn't got the full pace of the game yet. What a good pass that is from Olsen into his path. And let the ball slide through. Not a happy man if this game is not turned around. And it's layoff. There's Coyne. Coyle comes from the back. The pass just out of reach for him. Good start by Martin, awkward for all the players. A little more decisive, but still returned. By Presley to McKinnon, this is Olofsson. Martin in the way again, Presley returns it. Get a chance for Zetterland. He's equalised! His first goal for Dundee United. 66 minutes of the match gone, and the pressure applied by United pays off. Motherwell simply couldn't get the ball clear at all. Duffy challenging van der Gag. It was a difficult volley to control, but he steered that away from Scott Howey and in off the post. Well, Olsen did so well here initially, turning, firing in that cross. Headed away by Martin was strong enough. It returned instantly, though, by Presley. There's the pressure applied by Duffy on van der Gag, and the clearance there falling at the left foot of Lars Zetterland. Well, one point for Dundee United. Which will guarantee them a UEFA Cup place by finishing third in the league. Pedersen well tackled there by Christie. That was well thrown. What was that all about? Goodness me, Kevin Christie wrestling. Well, the ball played across by Zetherland for Pedersen here. Turned it away. Well, that was not a foul at that stage, but there's the offence. Tough time, so I like McLeish now. Getting back in the balance. There's Duffy coming in, he's in the corner, has he? No, it's a throw to United. Good far post ball that by Winters for Duffy. Olofsson in the near post, Duffy calling for the ball at the far post. Very tight angle, Christie did well. There's Olofsson's throw. What a chance it was for Winters. 
inside the six yard box, had to hit the target from there. Well, suddenly United had the game with the scruff of the neck. Look at that chance. Walsh is sitting up a little bit too high, perhaps. The away was by Presley. Here's Balakari turning well. Coins a little flick. It's perfectly correct. Mark Perry gets a hook from his keeper. Well, when they settled about what they saw, they had blasted that into the stand. Would have been in trouble, I'm sure. It's a good ball in, though, and a very good flick by Coin. Well, but Perry thought about waiting for Dykstra. Again, Zetterman got a touch, which is Coyle. Now Arnott. Desperate times for Motherwell inside that United box. Another good block, though, by Dykstra from Coyle's initial shot. Still upfield looking for the winning goal. Oh, well, a point might be useful for Dundee United's UEFA Cup <laughs> ambitions. Three points acquired by Motherwell. That's Coyle and his great goalkeeping again by Dijkstra. Breaking Motherwell's hearts. This gets beyond Bowman. It's very good play there by Coyle. His first touch was excellent. Motherwell's throw again, there are two minutes left. Here's Tommy Coyne backing into Presley. That's a super header from defence by Zetherland. Van der Gaij came careering in there, that's a heavy knock for both players. But brave, good defending by Zetherland. Coyne sending this into the danger area. Now Zetherland kept his eye on the ball, he would know fine Van der Gaij was there, that's a bad collision. Major doubt now for the replay on Tuesday. And now Ross. Another carry again. For two minutes of stoppage time. Bowman against McMillan. Presley got the touch. Here's Winters all on his own. What can he do with this? He certainly has the pace to take them all on. Does he have the trickery? Well, it doesn't matter because he's brought down heavily by Christie, who has been booked already. Well, Stuart McKimmy might be looking on with a degree of interest. In fact, it's going to be a consistent decision. Christie is red carded. The second yellow card offence. Well, he knew that straight away. Put Terrier on and now ordered off. Ten play ten. That's Olofsson looking for Winters. Time the jump well. Martin to Van der Gein. The captain comes surging forward. Here's Steve McMillan. Very awkward indeed. No question of that being a pass back. The Motherwell supporters looking there towards Mark Perry. Dykes with an excellent save. It was sliced clearly by Perry trying to clear the ball. But this was troublesome all the way. Sliced by Bowman, then by Perry. Good save by Dykstra. And it's the end of the match. A fiercely contested match all the way through with Steve Dykstra, a hero in goal for Dundee United with a number of outstanding saves. But United always carrying menace on the counter attack as Motherwell mounted attack after attack. Lars Zetterland snatched equaliser in 66 minutes. Alan Freeland, the referee, had a very tough game to handle. All that off Stuart McKimmy and Kevin Christie. But in the end, for Motherwell, disappointment. They only have one point when they wanted three. For United, it's a cup semi-final replay to come. It's Motherwell one, Dundee United one. I think uh, you know losing the equaliser probably in a manner we lost it was a bit disappointing. But overall, I felt we deserved the victory, um, which obviously we didn't get. But I thought we we deserved to win and the play alone. We didn't perhaps make advantage or take advantage of the extra man as much as we would have liked to. You know, we didn't get the ball. Maybe the, the ground isn't conducive to good flowing football. But I thought we we gave great effort and a bit unlucky not to win it. Now you're still three points behind after the result at Kilmarnock. What's your overall feeling about the relegation issue now? Well, we're hoping that there's twists and turns yet. You know, we know that it's a very tough one to go to at Ibrox. We've got them firm in here, but who knows? We've won at Ibrox before and. 
we can do it again if I can get that level of performance, if I can get that type of personnel on the pitch. We don't have any injuries between now and the end of the season, the next two games, then we've still got a chance. I was delighted with the performance. We made changes. We got the, the right reaction in terms of uh, positive attitude. Uh, you know, lost the goal, which dubious to say the least. <laughs> Uh, and then the ordering off, uh, which disappoints me a wee bit because the players on the park from both sides are of the opinion that no contact was made. Uh, but as I say, from Stuart's point of view, it's disappointing that he put himself in that situation after the descent earlier on. Uh, but felt hard done by but in both instances, but the players deserve a lot of credit for how they went about it and uh, far, far better performance than they've had of late. Does this give you some selection problems now for Tuesday? Yes, as I say, I thought uh, they looked a bit more like themselves. And uh, the one thing is, we came here, we needed the point, they got the point, they've achieved Europe. That's the pressure of fighting for that out the road now. And it's we can concentrate on the cup and try and get a wee bit silverware. Dundee United now can't be caught in third place and that guarantees them a place in next season's UEFA Cup. Mother will stay second bottom and remain favourites for that end of season playoff place. But as you can see from that, Kilmarnock, Hibs and mathematically even Aberdeen aren't out of the woods yet. Jimmy, what did you make of Motherwell? Alex said that he was delighted with the performance, but a draw doesn't do them a whole lot of good, really. No, it doesn't, particularly with the game against Rangers coming up, you know. So I must admit, I, I went to the game today and um, I thought Tommy, because of Chiefs Nate's game coming up, he would have been, you know, maybe resting a few people. When I seen Ray McKinnon up front from the start of the game, I thought he was protecting the players for Tuesday's game. I didn't realise that if they got a point today, they were in Europe. So I could understand why the game was played the way it was. I know Motherwell are fighting for their lives, but the way Dundee United went about it the second half, down to 10 men, I thought they thoroughly deserved their draw. Now, the Motherwell penalty. Uh, was it a penalty for the Presley challenge on Coyne? Well, I thought today, watching it, I thought it was... A, Tommy Coyne, he's away from goals. I thought it was a bad ball. I thought it should have went in more of a dangerous area. It looked a clumsy challenge this afternoon, and it still does looking at it on TV. Tommy Coyne wasn't going anywhere, he's back to goal, he's running towards the touchline. But still at the same time, referees give it. This had to be good, didn't it? Well, you're looking at the big fella, six foot five, so not only do you have to put a bit of pace on it, you've got to place in the side net, and that's what he did. What did you make of Motherwell's attitude today? Because, I mean, they're at the stage now where they're really scrapping and they've got to scrap for everything. Well, they are scrapping, and, and Big Alec knows, if nothing else, if the football's not going to be great, you're fighting for your lives, just give us 100% commitment, and that's all I can ask from you. But at the same time, you're still, because of the position you're in, you're a wee bit nervous. And they look a wee bit nervous at times. And like Alec admitted, they didn't really take advantage of the extra man. Dundee United actually played well with 10 men. They didn't take advantage of it. They didn't get enough balls in the box. And, and I'm sure they'd love to have seen the second goal going in. But the way Dundee United went about the game made life very difficult for Motherwell. Motherwell will be disappointed about the equaliser from Lars Zetterland. And you spotted a bit of ball watching which let him into the box for this. Well, well today, looking at it, Everybody said it was a soft goal, it was an easy goal to shoot it. But I'm watching Zetterland and you can see here, he's determined to get in the box. If anything comes outside the area here, he's going to latch on to it. You can Valakari and the young lad Christie there just ball watching. And as soon as the ball's headed out by the big centre half, he's determined to get in the box and there he goes. And it's a soft shot, he doesn't connect properly. But he's made the effort to get in the box and he deserves his goal. And you've got to give a fellow a bit of credit, a bit of ball watching from the two Motherwell midfield lads. What did you make of United? I mean, there are a fair few first-choice players missing, as you said. Uh, how did they play, as far as you were concerned? Well, when we played them, they beat us. They played the three lads up front, and everything was over the top. They're very quick, and Tommy knows the strength of the team, and the, the strength is their pace. And they played everything over the top. Today, that's why I thought before the game, we having Gary McSwiggan up front with Ray McKinnon, that there was no time for experimenting before Tuesday. And that's why I thought he was at it a little bit. They tried to play a wee bit differently in defeat this afternoon. It wasn't working the first half, the second half it certainly did, and I was impressed with Dundee United, I must admit. Tommy and a lot of the United players, I think, reckoned there was no contact in the, the tackle which earned Stuart McCamey a second yellow card of the match. How did you see that one? Well, he's committed himself there, he fancies it. I'm going to commit it to defence and I've got to make sure I'm first here because I've already been booked. If I don't make the tackle, there's a chance here I'm going to get a second yellow card and I'm off the park. But he's committed himself to it. It was a, it was a bad challenge, there was no doubt about it. But, like Stuart will tell you and Tommy will tell you, it's the first one, the first book will upset them more than the second one. And it's a bad time to lose your place in the United side with a possible cup final place coming up, although Kilmarnock might disagree with that. Well, of course it is, but that's what I was saying about um, going in the game today. I didn't realise Dundee United needed the point, so the 
both sets of players were fully committed. If there was nothing at stake for Dundee United, he mightn't have made that challenge, you know. But they were going for Europe today, so I can understand it. Kevin Christie was sent off as well. There could have been a third red card had the referee picked up this little incident involving Gary McSwigan and Stephen McMillan. Well, there didn't seem to be too much to there, just a wee bit of jersey pulling and a wee bit of arm swinging. But my guy, just there you are now. And I've known Guy since he was a young lad of Rangers, and I didn't think that he would ever do that. But he's lifted his hand, he's caught the fella. Young McMillan, he's very fortunate just in that line of play there, uh, the, the far linesman hasn't seen it. The referee looking at him, he had his back to the ball anyway. Can Mother will make it? Can they get out of second bottom? Well, not with a fixture, I don't think so, not against Rangers. For the next game, Rangers, they can do the nine in a row. And it's hard enough to go to Ibrox in August, and there's only three points at stake. Never mind going when they're going to clinch a nine in a row. So it's going to be very difficult there. I think what he's going to do is... The players will go out fully committed, they're still fighting for their lives, they'll still get a chance and that's the way they'll set out to try and upset things at Ibrox that night. I think the important thing is, after that, is to get the belief into them for if we are going to play Erdre for these two games, we've played 36 Premier League games, have the belief for two more games that you're good enough in order to see Erdre off. That's the most important thing now for me. OK, Jimmy, thanks a lot. Now let's have a look at all four divisions of the Bell Scottish League. All three Premier Games today ended one all. That included Kilmarnock against Hibs and explains why the battle to avoid the playoff isn't any clearer. In mid-table, Dunfermline made their Premier place safe with a draw at Tynecastle, and John Robertson equalled the Hearts League goal-scoring record of Jimmy Wartaw at 206. Celtic play Aberdeen tomorrow and anything other than a win for them will hand Rangers the title. 